Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks. I want to thank you for joining me. We have a massive show to get to, and get to it, we are going to do. The most alarming thing that I've heard today, far and away, and uh, again, I should say I heard this week, this is beyond alarming. This is probably the single most alarming piece of news you can hear. This is much worse than what's going on in Ferguson. I know, as soon as I uh, stopped posting on Ferguson, uh, nobody showed up. It's bigger than that, because this is a radioactive poison. Listen to this. Report. Islamic State claims radioactive device now in Europe. This is by Adam Credo. An alleged weapons maker for the Islamic State claimed that a radioactive device has been smuggled into an undisclosed location in Europe, according to an intelligence brief released Monday by the site intelligence group, SITE. So, how in the world is this not front page news on every newspaper? Um, again, I was explaining this earlier. It's not the nuclear mushroom cloud that you're thinking of from the day after, uh, the Ultimate Sin CD. This is different. Imagine a terribly poisoned dust, to put this into layman's terms, terribly poisoned dust, glued with, you know, you get dust on a tape, put on a hand grenade, throw the hand grenade. Poisonous dust goes everywhere. That is a very stripped-down version of what they're doing here. It says a radioactive device has entered somewhere in Europe, according to Twitter. It's a user named Muslim al Britani who claims to be a freelance jihadist. He's a weapons maker now working alongside ISIS. So, this mass murderer uh, waiting to see how many different uh, children he can give cancer to in the name of Allah. It says the claim by Albertani comes just days after reports emerged that ISIS could have in its possession a dirty bomb, which I just explained what that is, the elements of which were obtained via earlier ISIS raids on the university research facility in Mosul and that contained uranium. Albertani is also responsible for the flurry of reports on the dirty bomb. If you don't know about uranium, don't go anywhere, because the next story is going to let you know exactly what we're looking at here. It says Albertani, piece of human filth, who was uh, disseminated on his Twitter feed, weapons, instructions, and manuals, claimed on November 23rd that the Islamic State does have a dirty bomb. We found some radioactive material from Mosul University, according to the tweets reproduced by Sight. Uh, let's also remember that there's been attacks threatened for Christmas. These are the kinds of swine that would uh, blow up a dirty bomb around children. It says, while it is difficult to assess the veracity of Albertani's claims, U.S. officials have expressed concern about ISIS potentially smuggling nuclear and radioactive material out of Iraq. Um, again, you, you would hope, you would think that these would trigger some kind of... Uh, um, radioactive testing we're supposed to be able to you know be you could tell where a hospital is from space because these satellites will give off a certain heat signature when they see the, the the radioactive material that means that for whatever reason they're hiding it well or it's not a significant amount in terms of again taking out a city but if they let something like this go in a subway or in a football game in a parking lot before they even get into the place, then you're looking at a, a huge problem um, and a, you're looking at a lot of people being very sick for a long time. You're looking at cancer rates and heart diseases among people that are anywhere near the dirty bomb. Is that, that's, that's actually what's, what these people are trying to do in the name of their God. It says, while it's different, oh, I read that, U.S. and uh, Iraqi officials inked a pact in September meant to step up efforts to combat this type of smuggling, which the U.S. deemed a critical threat. I would say it would definitely be a critical threat. Uh, unfortunately, while played by ISIS, they stole uh, what was being peacefully tested upon. <clears throat> Iraq reportedly informed the U.N. in July that terrorists had seized nuclear materials being housed at Mosul University, some 90 pounds 
of uranium were said to have been stolen according to reports. That means we don't have any way to test where 90 pounds of uranium is being moved to. How many of your tax dollars went to satellites that we thought were a whole lot better than they are? And again, if they are working and they're just not telling anybody, well, maybe they better step it up here because this is July and it's still floating around here in December. Um, this is the most important news.com. I wanted to do this so that I could tie it into exactly what uranium is. There's pictures here that you will have to see. U.S. depleted uranium will poison Iraqi children for generations. So it stands to reason that if one of these swines set off a dirty bomb in a subway, that uranium will affect children for generations. Uh, that's actually more potent there than the uranium that I'm about to talk about here, as a matter of fact. Birth defects and cancer rates seem to have skyrocketed in Iraq in the last 15 years, and mounting evidence indicates that depleted uranium munitions could be responsible. DU is a radioactive and chemically toxic substance that U.S. military uses in armor-piercing weapons. Don't zone out on me here. Listen. DU burns upon impact, and if DU dust is inhaled or ingested, or if there is exposure to DU fragments, radioactive material can be absorbed into the skeletal tissue and organs, your liver, your heart, your brain. Depleted uranium is a genotoxic agent that has been linked to the development of cancer and other diseases, and that may lead to increasing public health issues if genetic damage is passed on to the children. In other words, not only will you get cancer and die, but it changes the DNA, and that DNA is altered in the reproduction, the sperm. It's replicated in the women's eggs. And then those children come out with all kinds of terrible things. It says the U.S. Disease, the U.S. military exploded at least 440 metric tons of DU in Iraq, which was dreadful. Uh, maybe up to four times that, it says, from 91 to 2003 on the invasions. Even as the Iraqi government still struggles with the toxic legacy of the use of DU in those wars, the U.S. recently delivered a... A-10 aircraft armed with DU to the Middle East for the U.S. bombing campaign against ISIS. So we are still using it. We're still dealing with it all the time as, as a practical weapon, as we like to call it. But it says that increasing health problems are linked to contamination stemming from heavy use of DU in densely populated areas and subsequent exposure by people surrounding communities contaminated scrap metal sites. In Hauja, surveys indicate that one quarter of newborns, that's one in four for you Kesha fans, are suffering from disabilities. Doctors at a maternity hospital in Basra reported a 60%, that's over half for you Kesha fans, rise in birth defects since 2003. The health crisis is so acute in Iraq that expectant parents live in fear of having a child born with defects. The U.S. government has yet Dwayne Bohawk and Richard Raymond reminded citizens of the Merry Christmas Bill. It's ridiculous and boneheaded that we even have to have this, but we do. So I'm going to give you a, a, just a real quick rundown here, the 12 rule of, rules of Christmas. I'm going to fly through these. Public school students written or spoken personal expressions concerning the religious significance like t-shirts is fine. Um, teachers are allowed to wear clothing or jewelry or have personal items that are Christian-based. Three, schools may teach students about the Christmas holiday, including its re religious significance, as long as it's taught objectively for secular purposes. That's wonderful news. Four, public schools, uh, the teachers may send Christmas cards to the families of students, uh, as long as they do it on their own time. Uh, five, public schools may include Christmas music, thank God. Public schools may not require students to sing Christmas songs whose messages conflict with their beliefs. So they, they're not made to participate, they are welcomed to. If they don't want to sing those, then they can sing other holiday songs. Um, they're not prohibited from handing out Christian literature. Uh, public citizens and groups may display creatures and other Christmas symbols in public parks, subject to the same reasonable space for other religions. 
Um, government entities may erect and maintain celebrations of the Christmas holiday, such as trees, light displays, etc. Neither public nor private employers may prevent employees from decorating their offices for Christmas or playing Christmas music. Uh, 11. Public or private employees who sincerely held religious beliefs require that they not work on Christmas may be reasonably accommodated. And 12. Government recognition of Christmas as a public holiday and granting government employees a paid holiday for Christmas does not validate the separation of church and state. Common sense in Texas. Remember, that law, uh, that separation, separation of church and state was originally implemented to protect religion. But you see what happens when the government gets involved in anything. Guys, Infowars.com going to give you one more piece of our Christmas update here. D.C. schools strip Christmas from their calendar after Muslims complain. Oh, my God, they're celebrating Christmas. So that means I should complain and we will shut down Ramadan, right? Let's shut down Ramadan because it offends me. If I was an idiot, that's what I'd say. Paul Joseph Watson, November 12th, 2014. The Montgomery County School District in suburban Washington, D.C. has voted to strip Christmas from the school calendar after complaints by Muslims who say the move doesn't go far enough. They can go far enough. They can go back to the Middle East. In a 7-1 to one vote, Montgomery's Board of Education removed references to Christmas, Easter, Yom Kippur, and Rosh Hashanah from next year's school calendar, replacing them with ambiguous terms such as winter break and student holidays. The decision was made after complaints by Muslim parents that the Islamic holiday Eid wasn't being recognized. However, the school district's failure to allow students time off for Eid prompted Saqid Ali, co-chair of the Equality for Eid, to accuse education authorities of fostering inequality. So now Christmas is banned because it's offensive to Muslims. That's what happens, friends. That's the kind of thing that happens when you get all this PC garbage in. The point is this. There is a long tradition of Christmas in this country. And I think if you're forced to celebrate it, I will stand up for your rights to not do so. But I will also stand up for the rights of every man, woman, and child that wants to celebrate Christmas. And God bless you. Merry Christmas from the correct views. Uh, I've got a few more stories that I want to get to. Three more. Don't go anywhere. I just want to quickly remind you to check out the Arcadia Grill. Why? Because the Arcadia Grill is going to give you some of the best food you've ever eaten. Um, I always say the ravioli is delicious. They got some of the best bread you've ever had. Uh, Christelle, not a huge red sauce fan, so she'll get chicken fingers or something. They've got everything. They have specials, so uh, sometimes there are certain things on the menu that aren't on at other times. How can you find out? Go to the Arcadia Grill. Tell Maria that you heard about it from the correct views. I would greatly appreciate that. Going to move on. Uh, the next segment brought to you in part by Mike McLaughlin. Look him up on Facebook.com. He writes some of the best fiction extant today. Mike McLaughlin. Guys, it's time to report on LeBron James. But hark! It's the LeBron James theme song. That's crying like a bitch. Why is that the LeBron James theme song? I'm going to be dead honest here. I'm from Akron. I'm, from, I'm actually from Canton. He's from Akron. I remember when he was coming up, I was saying that I thought it would be wise to make sure that we got his autograph as a young man. And we, my ex and I never did. And now I regret it as much as I knew I would. He's a very generous man. He does a lot for the area. But on a professional level, level, he's a cry white. Uh, uh, he got to build the entire Cleveland Cavs around the team that he wanted. And then when they didn't win, he blamed the coach. Uh, he's absolute, on a professional level, a dirtbag. I wish he would have stayed in Miami. I couldn't give two craps that he's back. I really I don't watch a lot of sports. I'm a huge skateboarding fan. And I do love the NFL. I do. I confess. But, um, again... This is an instance where I have to stick up for LeBron James. Mercurynews.com. I can't even believe I'm going to report this. LeBron James touches Kate Middleton 
and causes an uproar. British media has its collective knickers in a bunch after LeBron James dared to put his arm around Kate Middleton during a photo op on Monday after the Royals watched James Cleveland Cavaliers beat the Brooklyn Nets at Barclays Center. You know what I say? Take your ass back out of our country then. Don't come and watch our sports heroes if you don't want them to touch you. Get out of the damn country. I don't know anything about soccer, but if I went over there and I was invited, uh, to, uh, this, there was some star soccer player, I don't know any, by the way. I have nothing about the sport at all. That's why I picked it. If some star soccer player treats me as well as I'm about to tell you LeBron James treated these uppity wench, wench family crap people, if I was to get, they put their arm around me, I would put my arm around and be like, you know what, thanks, man. You, you've treated me wonderfully. I'm glad I came to this. No. Well, excuse us and thanks for letting us breathe the same air as you people, they write. That's right, I just called them you people. Apparently, Joan, James broke royal protocol, according to Britain's The Telegraph newspaper, which pointed out a similar breach in 09 when First Lady Michelle Obama got huggy with Queen Elizabeth at the 620 summit reception at the UK. This might be the only nice thing I ever say about that wrench Michelle Obama. I stick up for her, too. We don't care about, shouldn't touch the queen. Shut up. There are no obligatory codes of behavior when meeting the queen or a member of the royal family, but many people wish to observe the traditional forms, Buffy. According to something the New York Daily News found on the official website of the British monarchy, for men, this is neck bow, head only, whilst women do a small curtsy. Other people prefer simply to shake hands the usual way. Look at this uptight prude in this picture. She should just have to stay in her country. I mean, she has all the warmth of a wet stone on a cold winter night. We're America. We didn't roll up the redcoats in New Yorktown to turn around and take orders from anyone's queen, thank God. Protocol prohibits anyone from touching or kissing members of the royal family, Buffy, according to the UK Independent. Minutes after scoring 18 points in front of the royal couple, the 29-year-old star gave the couple cupcakes from his hometown of Akron, Ohio, and had a private photo session with the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. And this is the thanks he gets for treating them like royalty. I mean, literally treated them like royalty. According to the Daily News, James wore a sweat-soaked Cavalier shirt while wrapping his arm around Duchess Kate. I got another name for her. While she stood posing between the two men, Prince William held a mini jersey with the name of the couple's son, George, on the back. Another gift for you ungrateful swines. While Kate held one bearing Cambridge. It says Kate looked questionably at LeBron's arm around her, and I guess the Duchess had to turn, the, the William had to turn. You know what? This is why I say Americans be Americans. And if other people don't like the way you are, they don't have to come here. I'm dead serious. That doesn't mean I think we should be allowed to mow over other countries the way we do either. That's not what I'm saying. But this, this is just beyond the pale. I hope the next time they come, he doesn't so much as look at them. Friends, Natural Society, two stories left. We're going to end with a little bit of good news on this particular story. Cannabis dramatically, I'm reporting this at exactly 420, by the way. Cannabis dramatically reduces growth of brain cancer cells, according to new study. Do you know how hard that is to time? Cannabis has already been proven to treat cancer anecdotally in many people. Some with leukemia, others with lymphoma. But what's gaining the most spotlight is how cannabis is able to eradicate brain cancer. In a recent study, researchers at the Uni of London have found that cannabis helps to dramatically reduce the growth of new brain cancer cells. Um, look up the Media Speaks um, hemp oil girl. We interviewed the bravest, strongest, friendliest person I've ever, ever had the pleasure of interviewing. She has greatly extended her life by using hemp oil to treat her brain cancer. Uh, I guess she is still suffering from it and uh, 
you know, she'd have been dead a long time ago if she hadn't been doing it. So I know from her firsthand experience that it does extend your life. And she's lived a rather full life since she's had this. Um, her last posting, if you look her up, uh, she, she's still fighting it. But in some patients, it completely cures it. And in other ones, it greatly extends their life. It says the research showed the two active chemical components found in cannabis plants, dextrahydrocannabinol, THC, and cannabidiol, CBD, helped in the treatment of cancerous brain tumors. That's like the biggest fear of any thinking person. This is one of the most difficult types of cancer to treat effectively, and the rate of survival for patients who get brain cancers is often very low. For many, once they receive the diagnosis, they are given a short five years to live. Any hope of living after their prognosis is given a mere 10% chance. Those are some stark statistics, and there are links to it. It's promising that a team of researchers, it says, was able to treat brain tumors in mice in a variety of ways, either without any treatment, using cannabinoids alone, using irradiation alone, or with cannabinoids and irradiation at the same time. Um, for those of you that know, my father passed on from uh, gallbladder and liver cancer. Um, had he went to the doctor early when my brother and I begged him to, and he could have saved possibly, probably his life, the goal was to get him on hyperthermia, uh, Dr. Peter Wolf, Germany, look it up, hyperthermia with possible radiation, the radiation being left up to Dr. Wolf. Well, this is very promising news in the brain area that it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go the natural route. Should you? It depends. The natural route didn't work for Steve Jobs. There are other people that die from uh, not going the natural route. So it's best to uh, go to a natural path, I would guess, and a regular doctor. And then, you know, find a regular doctor that respects the natural path and vice versa. Would be, yeah, God forbid, I hope no one listening to this is ever in that predicament. Uh, Complementing other research findings, cannabis can treat brain cancer with zero psychoactive effects psychoactive effects that's very good it says the researchers with this most recent study have found that the active compounds in cannabis in combination with the radiation were able to dramatically slow brain tumor growth in mice dr wei liu senior research fellow and lead researcher of the project described the results as extremely exciting those treated with both irradiation and cannabinoids saw the most beneficial results that's good and a drastic reduction in size in some cases, the tumors effectively disappeared, gone, in the animals. This augurs well for further research in humans in the future. This is a mostly fatal disease at the moment. I only know one person that I know of who has beat brain cancer. Uh, two, if you count hemp oil girl who is still fighting. The benefits of the cannabis plant elements were known before, but the drastic reduction of brain cancers if used with irradiation is something new and may well prove promising for patients who are in gravely serious situations with such cancers in the future. Um, that's absolutely wonderful news, friends. And again, go to the article, look it up. It talks about the 66 unique compounds in uh, cannabis sativa and explains how they are and what they work. How they, what they are and how they work. The last thing I'm going to get to, the dum dee dum dee dum dee huge dum dee of the day. Guys, this is from Gateway Pundit. Jim Hoft. Idiots. Berkeley at hashtag Eric Garner protesters vandalize the Martin Luther King building. Now, Christelle wanted this to get the dumdy of the day. Uh, she wanted it to get the dunce cap of the month next month, possibly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, type in correct views dunce cap of the month. The trouble is, I don't know exactly which protesters did it. I know they did it at Berkeley, but I can't send the dunce cap to Berkeley because Berkeley didn't do it. The chances of it actually getting to the protesters is very slim. Otherwise, this amazing act of stupidity would definitely get the dunce cap of the month award. Um, why? You're sticking up for a black man by desecrating a building dedicated to one of the best black men throughout all of American history. That's why. Berkeley protesters chanting no justice, no peace, with no brain, smashed windows and vandalized several stores and city buildings for the second straight night on Sunday. This is dated December 8th. Two police officers were injured on Saturday when protesters hurled rocks and bricks at officers. 
Several businesses and the Martin Luther King Civic Center were targeted on Sunday. The protesters were reportedly angry at the recent grand jury decisions that exonerated white officers in the death of Michael Brown and Eric Garners. So the protesters hurled chairs through the MLK building. Idiots! Oh my God, friends, how, how dumb can anybody be? Look, you get a say in who gets the dunce cap of the year. There are 12 stories that I covered last year and sent dunce caps to. What I need you to do is go look up the video. Um, I posted it just yesterday on the 10th. Look up the video and vote for which of the 12 stories you think is the dumbest. When you do so, I'm going to promote your favorite charity for one month if you end up winning, and you will also get a free autographed Passing Time CD. So go to it. It's the Alexandrian solution that we're sending, and we are including War on For Your Mind in it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks and signing off. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are always posting nonstop trying to give you the best news as quickly as we can. You can donate to this show at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. If I had the money, I would do this every day, three hours, like every other talk show host does. That can happen. It would be up to you. So please make it happen. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you for listening to The Correct Views.